Hi, it's Tom Gregory here, and welcome to this video all about creating a production-ready VPC setup with public and private subnets. And when you're deploying containers into the AWS cloud, it's important to remember that not always do our containers require access from the internet. And in this case, to improve the security, we can deploy containers into a private subnet so that they don't have a public IP address. And if you're not 100% sure what these terms like VPCs and subnets mean, then you can check out this other video here because you're going to need this information for the rest of this video. So let's get right into it. And as a quick reminder here as to the difference between public and private subnets, remember that a public subnet has a route to the internet via an internet gateway. And this means that containers deployed into a public subnet have internet access and can be accessed directly from the internet themselves, as long as they have a public IP address. And on the other hand, a private subnet doesn't have a route to the internet via an internet gateway. And since it's not attached to an internet gateway, containers deployed into this private subnet cannot be accessed directly from the internet. And this is very important for security. But containers can be provided with internet access when they're in a private subnet using a NAT gateway, a network address translator gateway. And you might be wondering, why don't we just use the default VPC that's provided for us by AWS when we open our account? And this is fine for a lot of scenarios, but it doesn't actually create a private subnet for you. It only creates public subnets. And this is why I'm going into details in this video of exactly how you can create private subnets. And we're going to be using the AWS templating language called CloudFormation. And you know, sometimes it's good enough to use the UI to create resources. And that's great when you're showing people what to do or you're just trying things out for yourself. But when it comes down to it, the best way to create AWS resources isn't using the UI, it's to use some kind of templating engine, whether that's something like CloudFormation or there's another technology called Terraform that you might have heard of. And we'll be using AWS CloudFormation, which uses the YAML syntax to be able to define the end state of where you want your AWS account to be. And that includes creating whatever resources you need. And then we just feed this template into an AWS account and AWS goes and creates all the resources for us. It's super simple. And the CloudFormation template is going to include these resources. So first of all, we're going to have a virtual private cloud, a VPC, which is our own private network in AWS. And within that, we're going to create two public and two private subnets. And importantly here, these are going to be spanning two availability zones. And this means that when we deploy containers to these public or private subnets, then if one availability zone goes down, then we're going to have uninterrupted access because we're going to have our containers deployed into the second availability zone. And in terms of how our subnets are going to get internet access, it's going to work like this. So our public subnets are going to route traffic via the AWS internet gateway, which is also created by the CloudFormation template. And that's how those get internet access. And in terms of the private subnets, they're going to be routing traffic via a NAT gateway, and there's one per availability zone. And this NAT gateway is actually deployed into the public subnet. So the private subnets are routing external traffic via the NAT gateway, which allows them to pull out to the internet. And there are some other bits and pieces that aren't included in this diagram, and that's things like root tables, root table rules. And we'll get into that a little bit when we jump into the CloudFormation template later. But when you're ready to get going with this example, just click Click on the link which is down in the description and that will take you into the CloudFormation area of your AWS account where it's going to help you to apply this CloudFormation stack. And you just need to click next three times and accept all the default options. And then on the final page, you're going to select create stack. You'll now see a screen which shows you the progress of your VPC CloudFormation template creation and it will be in create in progress for a few minutes, but eventually we'll go to create complete. Awesomeness. So now we're in the create complete state, it's time for the good stuff and we can go and check out this new VPC. So go to services, VPC, your VPCs and look for a VPC called VPC example VPC. And we're going to just copy the VPC ID here. And I think I said VPC one too many times just then. But anyway, go to subnets on the left here and we're going to paste in the VPC ID that we just copied and hit enter. 
And you'll see two public and two private subnets appear. And these are the subnets that have just been created using the CloudFormation template. And if we click on one of the public subnets and click on the root tab, we can see a route to the internet gateway for traffic with an external destination. And this is just the same as the public subnets that get created automatically in your default VPC. But if we click on the details of one of the private subnets and go into the root table tab, we'll see something a little bit different here. And here we can see that traffic from the private subnets with an external destination, it gets routed via the NAT gateway. And we can see that in the target here, which says NAT dash and then the big scary number. So this means that services that we deploy into both the public and private subnets both get outbound internet access. So this is really cool. And at this point, of course, we could start deploying containers into one of these public or private subnets using AWS ECS or perhaps EKS, which is AWS's Kubernetes solution. And if you're interested to learn a little bit about what's going on in the background here, let's quickly jump into the CloudFormation template. And this is the YAML template. And you can see here we've got a list of resources that have been defined and that have been created by AWS. We're only going to cover off a few of these, but I just want to have a quick look at the public subnet here. And here we've got the IP address range assigned to this subnet. And we've also got a property map public IP on launch, which means that any services deployed into this subnet will automatically get a public IP. So that's the public subnet. And the second public subnet is pretty well the same as that. And if we jump into the private subnet here, we can see that it's got a slightly different IP address range and it has map public IP on launch set to false. So because it's a private subnet, services deployed there will not have a public IP address. And right here, we can see that we've got a NAT gateway definition, which is super simple. It's just saying, create me a NAT gateway. And it's being provided with uh, an elastic IP, which is a fixed IP address that they require. And you can see that the NAT gateway is actually deployed into the public subnet. You still with me? And if you do want to look through this CloudFormation template in your own time, then head down to the description where I've included a link to the file directly. And the way that traffic from the private subnet gets routed out to the internet via the NAT gateway is through this resource down here, which is default private route one. And in here, we've got a definition of a root table rule. And that says that any traffic that has a destination of 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0, which is any internet based external IP address that should go via the NAT gateway and therefore go out onto the internet. And there's one NAT gateway per private subnet, which is important for high availability, because if we have a look in the private subnet, we can see here that it's being created in a specific availability zone. It's actually the first availability zone. That's what this index zero means here. And if we have a look in the second private subnet, we can see it's being created in the second availability zone, index one. And this, of course, means that if ever an AWS availability zone goes down, and this doesn't happen frequently, then as long as we've deployed services into both of our private subnets, then we'll still have uninterrupted access to those services. So now that you've got a flavor of how this VPC setup works with the public and private subnets, then I definitely recommend going and applying this CloudFormation template to your own account and having a bit of a click around in the UI to see how it all fits together. And don't forget that once you've created this and you're finished with it, you can go ahead and delete that CloudFormation stack by going to CloudFormation and selecting the stack and just hitting the delete button. And even though this is an example of a production ready stack, if you wanted to use this for your own production systems, then I definitely recommend making a copy and tweaking it to your own requirements. I'm going to be using this CloudFormation template as the basis for lots of future videos where I'm going to be doing cool stuff with containers in AWS. So thanks a lot for watching. And if you've got any questions, just leave it down below in the comments. Otherwise, please give it a like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. I'll see you next time on Tom Gregory Tech.